Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Spark Your Rockstar Show. I'm your host, Carolyn Rim, and my co-host, Ian, here. I'm so excited to be here with you and ready to rock and roll. Ian, are you ready? I'm so ready, and I'm so glad to be talking to not only you, but Joseph McClendon, two of my heroes in this life. I guess only if Tony drops in, would that be even better? But this is amazing. <laughs> Thank you so much for giving me this opportunity. I appreciate it. You're a rock star, Ian. So guys, please help me welcome the one, the only, the amazing Joseph McClendon III and the crowd is. child. <sighs> Gotta work on my crowd skills. <laughs> <laughs> Holidays. Hey. hey, Joseph. Morning, how are you? I am amazing. I'm so grateful to be here with you. Um, if everybody who's logging on can please tell us where you're from. I know Joseph and Ian and I always like to know where everybody is calling in from um, because I know people from all over the world are currently watching us right now. Um, so definitely put in the chat. Uh, everyone's saying, Yippee, they caught you live. What is this? Well, Susan, you're in for a treat. This is called badassery that's about to happen here. Uh <laughs> Absolutely. You know, I just want to take a moment, you know, not everyone who's on here really knows who you are. You're two heroes of mine. But I just want to let you know, Justin McClendon, I've seen him speak to 50,000 people all around America this year alone. And he's spoken to over 300 million people around the globe. He's performed hundreds of workshops. He's coached. He's been a mentor. He's created one on one therapeutic interventions. And he's one of the greatest speakers of our time. That's why Tony Robbins has worked with him for over 20 years. He also wrote a book, a another version of Personal Power with Tony Robbins, which is amazing. And uh, I saw Joseph share the stage with Tony Robbins not too long ago, and he spoke to 14,000 people for two days. So pretty amazing. And Carolyn Rim is also a huge hero in my life. She's a dramatically affected so many people with her courage, her authenticity, and her determination to take consistent massive action with her videos, her meditations, and her lessons that have touched the world. And I just want to say, it's such an amazing story how you met. I'm so excited. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a hand. Let them know how they've affected you, how they've impacted your life. You know, also, thank you, everyone, for joining. So put in I really appreciate that. all of you. Said, <laughs> Joseph and I have affected you because I think, I think we have a lot of people on. Melissa, I know a lot of people are watching, and Joseph has been my mentor for three years now, and I can't even tell you the, the transformation I've seen alone from him being my mentor and giving his time. So um, really, to me, makes me uh, kind of tear up because uh, it makes me think about um, how I want to pay this forward to um, everyone in my uh, community as well. So thank you, Joseph, for everything you do. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So the one of the reasons I'm so excited about this is because I read Carolyn's book. Awaken mm -hmm. the Heart with it. Such a great book. But it describes how this happened. And I've heard Carolyn's side. I asked her one time, but I'd really love to know both your sides. But first, let's let me tell you the outline for today. First, I'm going to ask you a few questions about how you both came to make contribution and growth, the things that you focus on more most in your life. And then also what kind of impact has it had? And then what has happened with the inner circle, uh, the mentorship that's been given and what kind of structure has been created. And also, I'd love to know how you guys met. So it's interesting how life happens for us sometimes. And in this case, this is an exceptional situation. So I'll let first, Joseph tell you that one because Joseph tells it good because everyone's already heard my story. But it, Joseph, Joseph, it's a good story how Joseph tells it. Okay. Well, what story is that, Carolyn? Um, a, a crazy white girl charging the stage at you. <laughs> how we first met. <laughs> uh, Two things. I want to. I want to clarify something because facts do matter, and especially in this day and age when uh, we're up against uh, uh, so much that's being put out there that uh, uh, is not factual. I, I just wanted to correct one thing, Ian, and that is you, you made the number of three hundred million people. It's only four and a half million. <laughs> oh, did I say that? <laughs> I say okay. Only four and a half million, like that's only four and a half million live. I've only changed four and a half million lives, you know. So, <laughs> I guess if you count uh, television appearances, it might add up to, the, to that. But uh, I know. I, and um, so I met Carolyn 
gosh, maybe two and a half years ago now. I don't know. It, you know, it's it, it's time flies for me. And yeah, I was doing a UPW, and um, it was interesting because a lot of people uh, approach me at those events that you, as you might imagine. And um, she just had an energy about her, and she came up to the stage and and handed me a note. And being honest with you, I don't always get to read those notes. I I because I'm working up there, and I pass them on to uh, to um, uh, my assistant or the stage manager, and oftentimes I don't get to read them, uh, especially not until later. But I, I put that one in my pocket, and I and I read it, and uh, I uh, connected with her, and just realized that she's got a uh, a purpose and a mission. And, and with her. Uh, she asked me to coach her to to mentor her for a little while, and time is my biggest uh, nemesis, so. Um, I didn't get to, uh, and, and I didn't have to uh, coach her very much because she took the ball and started running with it. <laughs> yeah. I also heard there was a kind of a deal you made with her. Uh, basically, uh, well, how you were basically, your story is at some point your life was a little difficult and then you decided to pay it forward. And then you kind of made a deal with her that if you were going to mentor her, she would have to pay it forward and help out people. <laughs> That's my deal with everybody on the planet right now. I, I came into being able to do what I do because somebody helped me. And that's what their, their, um, their fee was to work with them or for them to work with me was that I pay it forward. And that's been going on since I was 19 years old. So wow. everybody that I work with, uh, that's a prerequisite. And, and a lot of people say that they will, but a lot of people don't. And I could tell that she, she would and has, obviously. So um, I thank you. And I say this to everybody that's on the phone right now. That's my deal with you as well. Um, as I said, time is precious to me. And I'm spending this time here right now because I believe that all of us have a purpose. Uh, and we, we've got several purposes. It's not just one. But one of our deepest purposes, as far as I'm concerned, is to give back and to contribute and to make sure that we not leave this planet a better place, but we live as we as we're living now we're making this place a better place for everybody around absolutely so i'd love for you if you have a chance to tell people a little bit about how you came from where you were to where you are now well um and some of you may know and by the way i'm not so arrogant as to assume that everybody knows who i am uh and and what i do by by profession i'm a psychologist i uh I uh, practiced in Los Angeles for many, many years. I had a, a, an office in, in Los Angeles for many, many years. But by trade, I'm what's known as an ultimate performance specialist. And all that is is seminars and workshops. I, I, on coaching, I help people. I call it going faster. And I came to where I am because uh, I was 19 years old. I was and at the bottom of my life. And what changed my life was... Uh, somebody that I didn't know, a, a kind person, gave me a book and insisted that I read the book. And I wasn't down for it, quite honestly. I was not having a good day. Uh, but I read the book, and the book was called Think and Grow Rich. And mm. the book, it changed everything. And I always say this to people. I didn't just read the book. The book had things to do in it. And so I did the exercises. I was desperate, and I did the exercises, and I believed in the exercises. And my my life changed very very quickly and um and i've been on that on that journey for a while but when i went back to the gentleman that gave me the book to thank him and i you know i said you know, how do i repay you what do i do for you what he said to me was he goes joseph you do the same thing that i've done for you for as many people as you possibly can for the rest of your life and being honest with you i was 19 years old and i wasn't you know i didn't quite understand how i would be doing that i didn't feel like i had that much to give but through time, I started to realize that that uh, that is, as I said before, that's our calling on this planet. And it's infectious. And I encourage everybody to do it. And and so through time, as I started doing it, I started I, I, I obviously did better for myself. But my friends around me would ask me, well, Joseph, what are you doing? What are you doing? And I'd pass on the information and I'd teach them. And then and uh, and my life would change and their lives would change. And it just grew and grew and grew. And so here I am now. <laughs> I, one thing i you know people talk about uh significance contribution gratitude i wanted to say uh what happens when you live a life of contribution how many people have come up to you and said joseph you've changed my life you transformed my life i mean is it 
Yeah, th that is the joy of my life right now. Right. Uh, is, uh, is the biggest choice because I, anywhere I go, I'm, I live in, in Newport Beach, California. And I, I remember when it hit me that uh, I, I really crossed that, I want to say finish line, but it was a goal to impact uh, a million people. And this is 10 years ago, I, I guess eight years ago now. Um, I was walking, my son was two years old, and we were, we were uh, at the mall. We have a place called Fashion, uh, Fashion Island here. And we were leaving the mall, and we were walking back to the car. And as we were walking back to the car, from the time we left the store we were in till the time we got to the car, and the last person chased me down in the parking lot uh, to thank me. And, it, you know, and this is 10 years ago, so there weren't any iPhones. So there, it wasn't about selfies or anything like that. It was just, you know, the, him and his wife, uh, they stopped me and said that, you know, they had been to one of my events uh, and, um, and uh, they just wanted to thank me. And, and not, it wasn't, it wasn't just to thank me because, you know, at, at the risk of sounding arrogant, I'm, you know, a celebrity or anything like that. It was to thank me for, for what they had gotten and what, how their lives had changed. And I asked them, I, which is the question I always ask people, well, what have you done to change other people's lives? And some people think about it, but these people just went right on and it, it was great. So it was at that moment that I realized uh, that I am making an impact. But to put a number on that, that amount of people, I don't know. I have no idea. I, yeah. I, all of them. How's that? Oh, <laughs> I, I actually want to take a moment and say how you impacted me. You talked about how if we really want to role model who we're going to become, we should rehearse. And I like to be like you and Tony. So I started going out on the streets and doing something with say, what would Joseph do? What would Tony do? And we would take people on the street and we would have them shake their ass and get themselves in a peak state. And there was one lady who was homeless and we brought her through gratitude. And someone saw that video and they were so touched that they said, Ian, I'll give you a hundred meals every week to go feed the homeless in San Francisco. And for the last six months, every Friday, and this is really amazing meals, these people feed the Dodgers. So every Friday I go and I take a team of people in San Francisco and we go down the streets and not only do we feed them with their food, but we coach them. We ask them what they're grateful for. We give them into peak states, we future frame. And it's such a powerful thing. You know, you can never understand how the dots are going to connect looking backwards, right? Like looking for, so basically I never would have imagined that just trying to be like you would have affected this in such a way, but now this is such a part of my life and it's transforming not only the people that are being fed, but the people that are going with me and me and my life has totally been pulled to contribution. I'll never be the same again. So thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you. Spectacular. Congratulations on that because I mean, I, I just love hearing that because the lives that you're changing, there's somebody out there right now that's going, this guy named Ian came along and he was just nuts, you know, and I did, and then he was just, you know, talking about shaking that ass, we're talking about doing this and everything. And now my life has changed and just the fact it's a processional effect. So congratulations. Yeah. That is spectacular. Thank you. Thank you. And also I'd like to say if anyone ever wants to feed the hungry in San Francisco, come on Friday and I'll give you the food and you can come out with me. So amazing. So also, I'd love to know, uh, Carolyn, how, how have you gotten to the point that you're at? What, what brought you to this point and then to Joseph and then making you want to move towards contribution so much? Yeah, definitely. Um, well, Joseph set such a good example for me with the elevator. You know, I'll never forget what he said. He said, I'll do this for you as long as you you know, send the elevator back down when you get to the top. And I remember my response clearly that I'll keep my elevator doors open and I'll rise people with me. Um, and so having that type, that level of uh, contribution, really, it's not something that um, it's like, it's almost like a hunger to, it's a hunger to grow, to give, to contribute. But really the people that I'm surrounding myself with um, is so important. My accountability group, my peer group, um, you know, because if you surround yourself with people who are not seeking growth, if you surround yourself with people who are not moving towards what you want, then of course you're, you're only just going to be a little bit above them. So I found that for me, like if I surround myself with people who are not, you know, hungry, who are not moving towards their, their mission to their vision, I shrink, I, I will not rise up. But if I surround myself with someone like Joseph McClendon, um, with other people like with Ian, with people who have such uh, a hunger to grow, and I myself is, I'm going to grow. I'm going to grow so much faster than I would, and that's why I love bringing everyone um, to the Rockstar community. 
uh, and being able to have him here with us. Um, Joseph, I, I wanted to ask you something too, because I feel like it's so important for all the rock stars watching to know, would you feel that having a, um, like a group or an inner circle or some type of program or mentorship would help someone go further faster um, where they are, where they are in the day? I think it's, it's one of the primary keys, Carolyn. Um, I, I owe my success, if I can call it that, to my mentors. I really do. I've had a lot of them uh, through time. And, you know, we always teach that you, it, it, to have an extraordinary life, to have an outstanding life, you've got to keep training. You've got to. You think about anybody in any other profession, any profession. I use sports, for example. You never see a professional basketball, baseball, football, soccer player that just goes, okay, I trained, and then so now I'm just going to stay good. They train every day. They train all the time. They're always in that community. They have coaches. They have mentors. They have people around. And they're always in that. And as soon as they step away from that, they decline. And uh, the other thing I wanted to add is this. So, so to answer your question, yes, it's, it's critical. And so many people overlook that and just, I was that way, quite honestly, when I was, when I was younger, just like, I got to do it myself. I'm going to do it myself. And that's just the school of hard knock. And that's what slows you down. You want to go further, faster, get, um, get mentors, a group of people, be in a community around the people that are, are, are moving forward. I have the privilege of being in front of easily 20,000 people every single month. So that's my community. Uh, however, <laughs> with you, Carolyn, I'm even this right now, this is, this is a, a, a method for me of, of connecting with people, like-minded people that are going forward for three reasons. Number one, the energy. You know, you're not, most people get their energy. This is the sad part. Get their energy from television. They truly do. They, they, they believe that, you know, and, and it's such a draw to be on television. The second thing that they get their energy from is their cell phone. It's a drop on spin. Is their cell phone. People spend so much time on this. This is where the attention goes in television. And, and so when you do that, it literally is sucking the energy out of you. It's not giving you energy. Yeah. So, uh, so to answer your question, you've got to be around people. Um, and the third thing is back on the contribution part of it, because people that, and I was this way, by the way, when, when people would tell me in the very beginning, you got to give back, you got to contribute. That's the, you know, the key. I wouldn't believe it. I would think to myself, well, when I have, then I'll give. you know, let me get mine first and then I'll get, but it's absolutely backwards because three things, when you, when you contribute, there's, you know, if you have children or if you have a parent or you have a sister, you have anybody that you love that you do something for and that, that you would do anything for, uh, save their life, you, know, you, you feed your children, you do whatever, anybody that you love. That feeling does three things. Number one, it makes, it propels you forward. Number two, it gives you energy. And then number three, as I said before, it makes you feel, it, it makes, it gives you that, that uh, energy, if you will, to, to, to go further faster, to do more, to have more, to be more. You grow as a person. So I would say yes. Number one, get yourself around mentors, coaches, teachers, um, and and community, and continue to get that training no matter what. And then secondly, give because unless you're doing that, you're missing a whole huge piece of it that's going to drive you and pull you into the future. Absolutely. You know, I've been to four UPWs this year and one date with Destiny. I've wow. been, and but the the thing that's the most powerful to me is this inner circle, and it's because of the lessons, it's because of the peers, it's because of you, and it's because when I went to Day With Destiny, I was surrounded by inner circle people, and they're amazing. These people are committed to going further faster, and it's so powerful to have a bunch of peers, and we all have momentum together. We reflect that, and we magnify that momentum with each other. So I wanted to talk a little bit about that. How did the inner circle get created? How did you, you, you basically said, Hey, I want to have these great peer groups. I want to have all these things. I'm going to create it. That's what you did. So how did you end up creating this? And, and what, what was your idea? Well, the great thing with the inner circle is um, because I want to make sure that, uh, you know, I, I, I respect Joseph and you and every, all the inner circle members, you know, um, I know for me, the inner circle is just about, um, creating a program that I was able to give my and meditate with them because it's a meditation program. It includes strategy and it includes accountability. Um, but I just wanted uh, Joseph to be able to mentor not just me, but um, just all the rock stars. So once in a while, Joseph will come up in our circle. And when he does, he just adds tremendous value. Um, and 
and whenever he contributes, I feel like it's such a ripple effect out, not just to me, but every single person who, who gets that contribution also ripples it out. So it's like this gorgeous, uh, eating pyramid of love and contribution. And, um, you, I mean, I don't think this, but one little mind shift can, I mean, really have mammoth shifts in reality. Uh, so that's what I love. I love that about the inner circle. And I, I love that about being my mentor and um, being able to have access in this way is, is truly grateful. Yeah. And, and one other thing I noticed is I've been in masterminds where half the people are engaged, half the people aren't. And one thing that I love is that you literally interview people to make sure that they are going to play full out. And that way, no matter who I talk to in the group, they're always ready to engage ready to do their studying, ready to make themselves great. So what gave you the idea to, to actually bring people like that? Are, are you asking me that question? Yeah. Yes. Um, really, uh, I mean, for me, it was just about, um, I, I love what Tony and Joseph do. I, I feel so um, just in awe of what they do every uh, every time they go to an event. So I just kind of wanted to take structure and, and see it in a place because the average adult is now spending three and a half hours on social media a day. And um, I find that when I connect with schools um, online, because I love my family and friends, I love my family and friends, uh, but really I, I also love having a group of souls that are on the same mission and path for me. It, it really is It's super important to have that in your life. So I'm very grateful for that. Yeah. Okay. So Joseph, I know you've given quite a few lessons and I love so many of them. Do you have a favorite one that you've given when you've been mentoring the group? Would you repeat the question? I didn't, I, you, you broke up a little bit. Do you have a favorite lesson that you have given when you have, uh, for our group, one of your favorite uh, lessons? Well, that's kind of like asking me to pick which one of my basic <laughs> cars is my favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hear you. I would say, I would say which one of my children, but I only have one. So, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, you know, I have a saying and I'll, I'll, I'll say it when I leave here. Uh, and I say it all the time and it's my, it's my, uh, favorite seed that I like to plant into people's minds. And that is this, that life is exactly what you dare to make it. And fortune favors the bold. So boldly step up and dare to make your life magnificent. And all that really means is this. Oh gosh, now you got me going. Because now I remember, I mean, I, I have a, a bunch of things that, that, I, that I, I like to espouse, if you will. And the other one is, is that those of us that dare to dream while the rest of the world is having a nightmare, and in case you've been living under a rock, you know, it's, it's a bit crazy outside of this circle, if you will. And some of us go through our stuff. Um, but those of us that dare to, to to think outside the box and to dream while the rest of the world's having a nightmare, we're not only going to create and 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 drive into our lives the things that we desire, but the greatest part about it is that we are the beacons and we'll do we'll be the leaders for so many other people to follow. Mm -hmm. And so if you boldly go after that, what which is what everybody's doing right now, you don't have to be on this call. You know, if you're listening to us right now, thank you so much. You don't have to be on this call. You got stuff to do. You got Christmas shopping. You got work. You got the kids' soccer. You got all that stuff. And you're boldly doing something different. You're saying, no, I'm going to feed my brain, feed my soul, and I'm going to learn something. I'm going to get something. And that boldness, as I said, fortune is attracted to that. And you're attracted to fortune if you do stuff like that. So, listen, I can go on and on. Trust me. I got lots <laughs> of stuff. I love it. I love this because all of it is about courage and courage is doing something even if you're afraid. And actually the root word of courage is from the heart. It's speaking from your heart. And you know, a lot of people are afraid to put themselves out there as a light on top of a hill. They don't want to be vulnerable or exposed, but when they do that, they inspire so many other people to be great. So that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, I always, and I didn't know how we were going to do this, this call, but every time I'm on the phone, Carolyn knows this, and I do it when I'm, when I'm speaking to the inner circle people, I never do a call without teaching something. So if you allow me to teach something uh, uh, right now, so that everybody gets something, and this wow. is critical, especially on what you just said, uh, because, Great. you know, I'm, I love interviews. I love things like that. And, uh, and I always, uh, my, another one of my saying is that, that life gives to those who do. It doesn't go to the, the, the spoils in life. Don't go to those who wish and want and desire. It goes to those who wish, want, and desire and do. Mm -hmm. So as long as you 
something, then you're going to create something. And so I want you to, I'm going to teach you something and then I want you to do something from this call. And, and again, that's part of my lessons. If, if I teach something is so that you'll get a result, but here's the thing. And you just reminded me of say it. yes in the chat if you're willing to play full out. <laughs> said. That's super important. All right. So say yes in the chat right now, if you're willing to go ahead and do something like Joseph said, go ahead, Joseph. So, so Ian, you talked about courage. Uh, and you're absolutely right. I just want to add to it to make a distinction so people can say, okay, how can I create more of that courage? First off, there's a distinction between courage and bravery. Okay? Mm -hmm. They're not the same thing. Bravery is temporary. Bravery is in the moment. When you step up and do something, like you said, in the face of fear, you do it anyway. That's brave. That's being brave. Mm -hmm. And so... When you're, and you can, you can characterize it by saying, we're being brave in the moment. Courage is continued and unconscious bravery, continued. In other words, it lives in you and it's who you are. Courage is you are courageous. You are not just being, you know, not, not having courage. You live it, you be it. And you be it by repeated acts of courage with celebra of, of bravery with celebration. What that means is when you don't want to do something, when you're afraid to do something, when you're procrastinating, when you're hesitating, and you don't want to do something, but you do it anyway, and then you reward yourself. Shake that ass, pat yourself on the back. Your nervous system quickly learns that is the preferred way to be, and it makes you feel good, and you do more of it automatically. And then you become a courageous person. You are and you have courage. And so my assignment to you, to everybody is, Go through every day, and, and you'll notice fear shows up in varying degrees. It shows up as something that's, that's really radical, you don't want to do it, or that scares me, or it shows up in just uncomfortableness. That's fear. If you don't want to do something, or you're being lazy, if you know, it, it's like I, I, I catch myself all the time, and, and now I don't have to catch myself, it, it automatically comes up from what I'm going to tell you to do. Is that if there's something that I want to do, like for example, <laughs> this is going to sound incredibly uh, uh, arrogant, but you know we're, we're all friends here. I bought a new massage chair, and this thing is a badass. It <laughs> literally stretches your ass out, massages your back. <laughs> and, like, it's unbelievable. It's amazing. So um, I've recently been investing into cryptocurrency. So I, I was down in my theater room, and where the... Where the uh, massage chair lives and i get in the chair and when you get in there it literally grabs your soul and massages it so you don't want to leave the chair and so i'm in the chair and then i also realized okay there was a movie that i wanted to watch about uh, uh digital currency and i only like i said before time is my my is, is the thing that i don't have a lot of so um, I wanted to watch this movie while my soul was being massaged by my chair. So I, and I get in there, you program the thing, and it starts the process, and it's heaven. And then all of a sudden, I realize the remote's all the way on the other side of the room. So I got to get up to watch the movie. I got to get out of the most comfortable place in my house to go watch the movie. And my first off, my, my soul said, Joseph, stay here where you're loved and you're nurtured in this <laughs> of life. But then what kicked in was my courage, which said, get up and go get it. Go because that's going to help you go further faster. And it overrode the most comfortable thing I could be doing in the moment. And so I use that as an example. It wasn't some monumentous thing where I was afraid or anything like that. But because I did what I'm going to tell you to do, it becomes automatic. I get up and I go do what I need to do. So here's your assignment, if you will. Uh, first off, did that make sense? Put in the makes chat. Sense. It makes yeah. sense, okay? Because yeah. you want to create. So go through your day and anything that is uncomfortable, that you know you should do, anything that's com un uncomfortable, or you even just get the idea that oh, I don't want to do that, snap out of it, shake that ass and pat yourself on the back. That's all you got to do, because what your nervous system does, remember, reward is what tells and praise is what tells the nervous system to do more of it. So if you don't want to, you know, you know, eat healthy food, you go, wait a minute, I'm going to eat healthy food and you do it anyway. And even just the decision, you go, wait a minute, let me snap myself out of it. Shake that ass, pat yourself on the back and do that is, you know, I, I've been doing it for a long time, but I encourage you to do it. You got 
five days to do it. I think I talked to you guys in five days, don't I, Carolyn? Yeah, the inner circle. Well, for the people that are in the inner circle, yeah, on Zoom, you can talk to the inner circle members. I think there are probably some people watching right now that aren't in the inner circle. You guys okay. can private message me and let me know. When I talk to you next, I'm going to check in. And these are simple, simple, simple things that make the biggest difference. Yeah. You know, one of the biggest uh, things that I learned from my mentors, one of them obviously is Tony, is, to, is that complexity is the enemy of achievement and forward motion. So if you make things complicated, you're not going to do it. So this is so simple. Recognize your pain. Recognize your uncomfortable. Snap out of it and praise yourself. That's it. Wow. Great. Thank wow. you. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, give Joseph a hand. Yeah. Joseph, I in the third. I have way too much fun by myself with that mic. Joseph, you're amazing. Ian, is there anything else? Or I think just for maybe two or three minutes, if any other questions um, come in, just uh, let me know. Because I know that I told, I promised everyone that at the end we would do questions. So if you guys have any questions for Joseph, now would be the time to ask. Um, we have about two minutes for him to go over a question or two here. Ian, is there anything else that you wanted to ask Joseph? I just wanted to say that I really appreciate what you're doing. And I wonder, are you going to um, make it more involved later? What are your plans for the future for the inner circle? Where do you see it in two, three, five years? What is your intended outcome? Well, Joseph's just, a, I know he, he really is. I just want to make sure Joseph is a mentor to us in the inner circle. So he comes on and um, he'll share a message with, with us. He really just is a mentor. In the inner circle, we see massive results happening. I know Joseph has his own programs as well that he does um, that uh, we'll be uh, sharing for everybody and, and allowing them to come to it as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, I'll let Joseph do that as well. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I got excited. Uh, uh one of the things, and, and by the way, I want to remind everybody that something is getting ready to happen, and do not wait until January 1st to do it. And I'll actually get together with Carolyn and Ian and talk about there's something as a gift that I may give to everybody about that. Uh, and that is, don't wait till New Year's Eve to make your New Year's resolutions. And I know in your circle, you guys have been doing this already. Start doing it now, and start figuring out what it is, and start taking the action now. Hit the ground running. Most people wait till New Year's Eve to say, I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to lose weight. I'm going to make more money. I'm going to do this. And they do it while they're, you know, at a New Year's Eve party and they're half baked. So, you know, they don't remember the next day. The statistics are uh, as much as 85% of all New Year's resolutions that people make are the same ones that they made last year that they didn't accomplish. So don't wait. Get on it right now. Decide what it is that your, that your 2018 is going to be like. My saying is, remember the future. Always remember the future. Every single day, have something that reminds you. It goes, oh, yeah, this is what's coming up. This is what's coming up. And then, of course, praise yourself and go after it. And so my future is, you know, I, I, uh, my, the way I run my life is I love to be home. I have, a, you know, my paradise is my home. And I travel quite a bit. I generally do one extended day event every month, which is anywhere from three to five, maybe even a week long. And then I do one or two uh, keynote speeches. And some of those, I'm out in the morning and back home in the evening. Um, and having had that schedule, um, I do, I think, five or six UPWs with Tony and then uh, a bunch of other stuff. So one of the things I'm committed to doing, and Carolyn mentioned a little bit about it, is to do, is to provide more uh, of a couple of events that I do. And you'll get more clarity on that as we go on. But I have not done that over the last little while because I've been so busy. This has been the busiest year ever. So I'm committed to doing that uh, this year. So you'll see more of that because I get that all the time. People, people uh, I just did an event in, in, uh, in the Netherlands, uh, which is really, I think, only the second one of my events I did all last year. Uh, the rest of them are all promoters' events. Uh, so, uh, so people are asking me all the time. I get it all the time. You know, when are we going to do more? So this year, you'll see more of those. That's, That's awesome. great. Thank you so much. Uh, there was one question um, uh, I was in the chat. But we'll, we'll allow this one question. Um, it says, what are, Kyle uh, Zadroski says, what are your most important morning rituals, Joseph? Wait a minute. Is that Kyle Zadrotsky? Yes. Is that the Kyle that speaks to us at UPW? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wow. Hey, Kyle. How are you? I'm, I'm, uh, I'm honored to see you, man. I hear you from. Um, rather than to go through it, if you go to my Facebook page, 
um, I made a video and just scroll back through it. I did a Facebook live and it's up there. And I literally walked through my entire ritual from the time that I wake up, my eyes open, what I do till the time I uh, do whatever I'm going to do during that day. So um, it's, it's more detailed and I'll tell you complete with all the machines that I have and, and gadgets that I have in my house uh, in there. So go to uh, uh, Joseph McClendon, uh, Facebook uh, forward slash Joseph. Joseph, I'll put the link in. <laughs> Link into your page. <laughs> scroll back, scroll back through because it's been it's been six months ago, I think, that I did it, but it's in there. You'll find it. All right, I will. He says he loves you, brother. <laughs> Kyle says he loves you, brother. <laughs> I just want to say one thing. I actually run a group called Tony Robbins fans, but it's also Joseph McClendon fans. It's about ten thousand people. We also have the morning routine in there, and uh, it's just been so great to see how the wisdom you have has shaped those people as well. So thank you for that. And yeah, people, I love your morning routine as well. I, I love Joseph's morning routine. I've been doing the chi machine uh, ever since Joseph literally got on the one of the one of the technical calls and he showed us the interview with his smile. Like, All right, you guys need one of these. And he actually turned it on and he did it with us on the phone. And I think probably a hundred of them were ordered right after that call. A <laughs> hundred chi machines were ordered on Amazon. Um, but it really does, it, it changes my life when I, practice rituals that uh, you have told me, Joseph, and especially the the rebounding, the chi machine, um, and celebrating first thing in the morning. Um, Joseph, one of the biggest things is waking up and shaking my ass. I know that probably sounds so simple, but just waking up and being like, yeah, today's the day. You know, Instead of waking up and being like, oh, God, another day. I got so much to do. You know, it, Joseph, you do. You make, it, you make life so much more um, joyous. You really do. You have such a great beautiful energy about you just a transforming energy just to be in your space so i appreciate you coming in with the rock stars Ian, was there anything else that you wanted to go over uh with joseph no that's it thank you so much for your time both of you i really appreciate it thank you ian so much life is exactly what you dare to make and fortune favors the fool step up and dare to make life see you guys at the top come on Woo! Ladies and gentlemen, Joseph McClendon III, put your hands together! <laughs> thank you, Joseph, so much. Thank you, thank you. Ian, thank you so much for coming on for the Rock Stars. I appreciate it. Um, you are amazing, and I'm grateful to have you part of my life and a part of this community. And I love the hell out of you, brother. I'm yeah. excited. I'm excited for I am, It all goes back to you, too. Thank you so much. The feelings are all mutual. You rock. You rock, baby. All right, I'll talk to you later. Okay. So, no, 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 no. it's just us. No, no, no. Just you and me, guys. Okay, guy, guy, guy. Now, 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 normally, I would end this, but I'm feeling frisky, and I kind of want to sing. So, please put in the chat <laughs> any requests for songs. Uh, Lisa Harold says, Joseph, you're so hot. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love Lisa Harold, man. Gotta love her. Joseph is a hottie. <laughs> All right. All right. Amazing job. Great, great job, everybody. Thank you, Kyle, for being on. I'll have to talk to Kyle if he speaks to UPW. I'm going to maybe get him on the show here, the Spark Your Rockstar show. All right. I'm going to sing my way out of here like I normally do. I didn't. I don't see any comments. I know I have a lot of echo. It's uh, the microphone. I can turn down the echo. See? Now there's no echo. But it, but it just sounds better with the echo, doesn't it? <laughs> all right, guys. You go have an incredible rest of your day. I love you, Brenda Allen. I love you, all you rock stars. For all you rock stars out there that want to go ahead and join the inner circle, please message me, uh, private message me. Because I'm happy. I don't know that song. <laughs> I know that song, but not not off tune. Okay, so uh, thank you guys so much. Make sure you private message me for the inner circle. Uh, I will definitely send you details on how you can get Joseph to uh, mentor you and, and meet a rock and roll in this group. And Ian and Megan Hammer, Mike Pepler, all of the people on my incredible team and in the inner circle, Sarah Soto, um, all you rock stars. It's the most wonderful time of year. All right, Cheryl. It's the most wonderful time of the year. <laughs> really enjoying this microphone. I don't know all the words to that song. Um, so I'm just going to, all right, uh, not Jingle Bells. 
dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. Oh, what far we go? Laughing all the way. Ha, ha, ha. All right, go enjoy the rest of your day, guys. I'm out. I love you, rock stars. Mwah.